Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel here where we give you all sorts of world-class advice on remodeling your homes, your kitchens, your bathrooms, flooring and tiles. We also cover engineering disasters like we're showing you here today because of the issue here with the buyer's inspector that came in and found all sorts of issues here with the house. But if you have not subscribed to our channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below there right now while it's fresh on your mind. And make sure you click the little gray bell icon next to it. That way you'll be alerted every time we upload a video because we could be uploading all sorts of videos and YouTube will never inform you about it. So make sure you click on that bell icon as well too. So let's get started. Hey, let me ask you guys something. You're looking here at an electrical panel here in the kitchen here of our friend's property and there is exactly two violations of the National Electric Code here. So when you look here at this electric panel here, do you see what the two violations are? Well, if you don't, you could be in for trouble. And as our friends are here, because their house is for sale, they have a buyer under contract. The buyer sent their home inspector in and the home inspector gave us this report here showing us everything that is wrong with the house. And there's two violations here. So when buyers come to buy your house, they send in an inspector afterwards and the home inspector will come in and do a whole report like this on everything they found in your house. And you should not ever get to the point where it gets found by the home inspector's report because buyers will start walking away from the deal in a hurry and they're allowed to legally too. So the idea is to find stupid things like this that you can fix yourself ahead of time and don't let it wait to get to the point that the buyer's home inspector finds it. And even if you're not selling your house, these are things you need to be looking at and getting fixed now while you have the time to do it. Okay, so as you look here at the electrical panel here, one of the things that, that you can see here is there is a rule in the National Electric Code here that requires that you don't block electrical panels. So right now this refrigerator is blocking it, but it's sort of like, okay, is it or isn't it? I mean, you can still open it. So the whole purpose of that rule was so that like little old ladies that can't move the refrigerator to get at the fuse door when the lights go out, you know, they can't get in here to, to open it up and, and get the switches. But you can see here, you still have access to all of your switches here. But the problem is that this is the panel. And if you ever had to get in here and have it serviced, the service technician now has to roll this refrigerator out of the way here. And uh, in order to undo these four panel screws here and to pull the panel off so they can get in there to do the work. So that's where the problem is. To me, it's, it's not that big a deal, but it is kind of stupid when you take a step back and look at this here. Because when you look over here, it's like, you know, the builder could have put this panel just a few inches over this way more, you know, or, you know, design the wall differently just so that there wouldn't be this much overlap between the refrigerator and, and here. Now, maybe you could buy a, a refrigerator that's not as deep here as this one, but it's pretty hard to find a refrigerator that isn't sticking out this far these days. Okay, so now we want to show you another issue here that may not be quite so obvious to you, but let's focus in here on these screws here for a second. So you take a look here at this screw here, right? Okay, so you look at the screw here and we're going to just unscrew this out of here and I wanna show you something here. So something that I can see, just as soon as I started to pull the screw out, there's something wrong. You see what's wrong with that? That's the wrong type of screw right there, folks. That is not a fine threaded, uh, screw here that you're supposed to be using here. And not only that, look at it, it's got a sharp point on it. That's the violation of the electric code right there. You're not allowed to use panel screws that have a sharp point. You're supposed to use a screw that comes to a flat point. Now we do have one on here that is. All right, so let's take a look here at the upper screw here. And this one I believe is a correct one. Let's take a look. Now, when you pull it out here, you see how it's, it's a much finer thread because that's a machined metal thread that you're supposed to be using. And you notice how the tip of it is also flat. It's not a pointed. This is the proper type of screw to use here. Okay, so let's look at both of these screws here next to each other and let's see why. I mean, they look essentially close to the same type of thing. Why is this screw up at the top here illegal, but this screw here is not illegal? In fact, that is the required screw on the bottom there. Why is that? So what happens is with these electrical panels, right where the screw goes in, where you saw us pull them out of the wall there, there's all sorts of wiring back in there. Wiring that loops around inside the electrical panel. 
and if you have a pointed screw going through there you run the risk of piercing one of those wires and if one of those wires is a black wire carrying 120 volts and a kid touches the screw on the outside which is on the wall next to the refrigerator there they could get shocked and killed even so it's a it's, it's incredible how just a little bit of stupidity can cause a lot of problems and this was done by a handyman so over the years we don't know how or why handymen do this why they don't know this very simple fact but they should be running to home depot and buying a four banger of eaton screws or whatever screws that that match this this size and shape in here have the flat tip here so that they're not causing a potential fatality down the road here so this is why I always tell people don't let your your, your regular handyman guys go and working around the outlets and, and the fuse panel and and this is what happens when you allow people that aren't licensed electricians anywhere near the electrical stuff these are the kind of things that happen why or how they lost the original screw I have no idea but I've never in my life lost one I always end up going to buy them. So this is a common failure mode that we see. This is probably the fourth time I've seen this in the last two years. So it is very common. So these are things that you should be examining now because you want to make sure you don't have a condition like this in your house right now, whether or not you're selling your house because this is a, a, a very dangerous situation that you need to avoid. So especially if you're putting your house up for sale, you gotta look for this, because if you don't find it, the inspector will find it, they'll put it in the report, and you're finished. That's it. Whatever sale you thought you were going to have, gone. Because buyers will back out when they see unsafe items like this. And usually when you see shoddy work like this being done in people's houses, we see other things too, like failed outlets, which was also in the report here. We had a cross-wired outlet here, GFCI outlet here in the kitchen counter, because again, the homeowner or somebody in the past or the real estate agent had brought in people that are you know, low paid and low knowledge. And, you know, and typically, let me tell you something. Uh, so let me tell you an old saying we use in the business here, in the construction business here, and that is that skilled labor is not cheap and cheap labor is not skilled and that's what you find people can't afford an electrician so what do they do they get some handyman guy that they're paying 10 bucks an hour or whatever to come in and, and fix it and that's what you get but you're, you're creating really bad situations here Okay, so here's our new screws here. So you can see the nice brand new shiny screws here. And there's your, your flat tip there. Notice how it's not a sharp tip. So there's absolutely no danger of these ever piercing any wires or anything inside the fuse panel. So let's go ahead and get these installed. Okay, so we'll put this one up here. And man, I really wish they would make these things Phillips head or at least Torx head. Anything other than flatheads. Flatheads are the biggest pain, especially when they get tight, because a lot of times these get a little tight, especially the first time you're trying to run one of these into the panel there. So you just got to work at it a little bit there. So it's going in good, which is a relief, because I was concerned that when they ran those drywall screws in, sometimes they can damage the threads on here. Okay, so there you go. All right. So now as we zoom back out here and look at our handiwork here. Well, we finally got the repair done here, and I feel a lot safer now. I can sleep better at night knowing that we left our friends here with a much safer fuse panel and that nobody's ever going to risk getting an electric shock here by ever touching these screws because they have flat tips. They're not going to pierce any of the wires here. So we at least made this electrical panel here compliant in one way that it wasn't before. There's not much we can do about the refrigerator, but hey, I'm happy because at least you can still open the panel door here, you see. So I'm happy with that there. 
So anyway, if you found this video useful so far, please give us a thumbs up down below. That lets us know that you like us. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, what are you waiting for? Hey, go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below there because you don't want to miss out on any of our world-class videos on remodeling and difficult repairs. This was a very easy repair for us today, though. And we do tool reviews and shop with me at Home Depot and Lowe's and Costco and Sam's Club, finding you the best deals and tools and home remodeling and all sorts of other products like that. So thank you so much for joining us today, folks. And we will see you on the next one.